to the Night Cream Bradshaw YouTube channel. In this video, I'm joined by my good sis, Courtney, aka None of My Friends Watch Anime, and we are diving into episode three of Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story. In this episode, our good sis, Queen Charlotte, mm -hmm. is still trying to figure out who exactly her husband is, what the hell is going on, and things slowly start to come together. Meanwhile, Lady Danbury is cashing in on her social capital to advance her and her husband's status. And the first ball of the season changes a lot of things for a lot of people. Things really heat up in this episode, so join us as we do a deep dive and get into it. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, join our Patreon, tell a friend to tell a friend. We be over here talking about fun stuff, and I will see you guys next time for episode four. Bye! So we roll over to episode three. Shouts out to our brothers. <laughs> I <laughs> uh, we're over in episode three Charlotte is trying to piece together the clues of who her husband actually is and things are kind of starting to come together in this episode Lady Danbury attempts to gain social favor and status using her position as an insider and the first ball of the season changes a lot for everyone as the tongue intermingles mm. um Thoughts. first of all i loved how the i loved how the episode opened with flashback or current current charlotte and she says the line look at me i'm absolutely gorgeous right like i love that lady like i loved her in bridgerton too so i was really excited when i again i didn't watch season two so i don't know what she gave there but i was excited to hear about queen charlotte because i liked her and i, I wanted to know more about her not just from a, a bridgerton perspective but because she's based on a historical figure um and so i was interested in like her story so to see her in her like regalia and just like no look at me like I'm stunning I'm gorgeous like this is well, me. she's a ridiculous person and it's Love fun it. to see her become ridiculous yes you know um yeah. and we get more clues about why she is as ridiculous mm -hmm. as the mm -hmm. season progresses mm -hmm. um so the day of the coronation Brimsley wanders down to the cellar where he thinks his man is stepping out on him. And he was like, you can talk about else. You can just stay there, but make sure with they the help. the right station. With the help. You out here with the help? <laughs> he like, First of all, girl, calm down. Like, I'm just in the cellar. But he was sweet. He was sweet about it, though. He was, he was like, he was like, no, it ain't no, it ain't nothing like that. I'm sorry. He was but really it's, sweet it's, about it's, it. It's just like that Brimsley pulled up. <laughs> In the basement, bitch. In the cellar. It was like, okay, what the fuck going on down here? And he said, well, I don't know what's going on down here, but what are you doing down here? Because you wouldn't even be seen in this place. What are you um, doing? So Brimsley peeps. Peeps, yeah. That and then goes and tells Charlotte, baby. Ran back and told it. I love, I love it. So the day you better be loyal to me. Hello. The day of the coronation, Charlotte and George play their roles really well for mm -hmm. the public. And then they go home and they have sex on even days. Courtney, what are even days? Monday, Wednesday, Friday? What are even days? I thought maybe like the second, the fourth, the sixth. What's right? One? Is Sunday one or is Monday one? I, I literally was thinking days of the month. Oh. Right? Like the second, the fourth the six so like every other day right okay because right? i do things in like a weekly but because like mm -hmm. for me my exfoliating days this is the way my mind works my exfoliating days are monday wednesday friday and right. for some reason i view monday wednesday friday as like the main weekdays and tuesdays and mm -hmm. thursdays are these random kind of like off days <laughs> in my mind so Fair. i look at tuesday and thursday as like kind of odd days. odd days no one i don't know how to explain that does that make sense 100 yeah because okay. i do i do my masks on saturdays like you know like my clay masks and stuff like that and i feel like that's an odd day Okay. But I do think Tuesdays and Thursdays are odd days. They're odd days. So that's how I was yeah. thinking. But what you said makes so much more sense. I'm kind of embarrassed. No, um, no. But because, and the only reason why I think that is because I don't, I don't know how they calculated days back then. I also wasn't sure if they were um, talking about like her ovulation. Right. Because you know how like, you know, when you ovulate, you have a bigger chance of getting pregnant. So like perhaps ovulation was calculated different then. Obviously, they didn't have the apps and things like we do today. 
but like maybe that's what they were thinking yeah either way honey they was getting it in babe when they started having sex in front of the staff what, that tweet in front of the salad <laughs> never not funny never gets all in front of us i was cracking up and then like brimsley oh, we gotta get out of here like, like everybody get, get out shit. Get the- <laughs> right. it, it was i the loved battery. it it was the sound Can yes we the sound design of this episode? yes excuse me but um, i also liked but i liked the fact that they were comfortable doing that in front of everybody tell me because what- it's like well because they're always constantly watched they're always under the eye of somebody and it's like you know what you, i mean if you're going to be here while I get my my clothes changed or while I'm bathing and like whatever, it's like, well, shit, you can watch this too, I guess. You was going to be in the room anyway. You know what I mean? So I you just feel like is. they... It makes me think about how people talk about how on reality TV, at some point you forget that the cameras are there and you really are just living your life. Because for just me, living. I watch reality TV. I'm like, how are you not so aware that these people, where people, it's like people are saying things and lying and it's like, babe, you're on camera. Did you forget? Yeah. Did you forget? Yeah. So yeah. I think that those people do tend to at some point kind of blend in. Did mm. you notice how they were before George even comes did you notice how they watched her eat her food yes why were they watching how I think it could have been as signs of pregnancy like or I think it could have been perhaps one she was black and maybe she was new to them like perhaps like you know they hadn't seen a black person in their setting like that you know like in the royal house obviously she's the first of their kind i also think it could have been um getting her reaction to the food because she's foreign right like she she wouldn't doesn't like and okay okay i was really curious about that um we and she's in solitude right so like you know what i mean so like just imagine you having to wait on somebody hand and foot and they're they're new they're new to the country you don't know them they're foreigners and you just have to like sit there and, and be in front of them while they eat. I feel like the, I probably would be. What you doing? What else probably, you I probably would. At? Yeah, like yeah, what else you look, look at? at? Yeah. Um, in this episode, we meet the Ledgers, so we meet Young Violet. I am so obsessed. Oh, sweet. I'm obsessed with her relationship with her with her father. Or dad. I love that he calls her beauty, brains, brains. and beauty. I love that because I try to do that to my niece because I think yeah. that my niece is the most perfect little creature in the entire world. I'm so obsessed with her face, even though mm-hmm. she doesn't look like me anymore. Mm-hmm. I am a little bit sad about it. I try to just make it a point because we talk about this a lot, right? The significance of beauty in our culture and what it means to not feel beautiful, but what it also Mm. means to feel. It's such a thing. And I don't want her to think too much, put too much weight on that. So I'm always trying to also award her for being on honor roll and like Mm -hmm. reading really well. And like, I don't, you know, like whatever. Anyway. um, And Violet was so smart, right? Like asking to be a part of like the mathematics and like whatever and the mom was like oh you're t-, like when she questions she's like but they are the same thinking. as us when she says that's too much thinking mm-hmm. and it's just like baby mother because you don't think enough because right. lady ledger is giving like heavy brexit energy right right, and right. violet is like but some of them have more money than we do than so you to me how exactly they're different from us when she and- said that i gagged she was like, well, some of them have more money than we do. I said, oh. And then, uh, uh, what's his name? Well, say something, sis. <laughs> Answer my girl, because she's right. Violet's so cute. I actually like her as an adult, too. Violet is lovely. She I love her. Lovely. She's and adorable. Violet, you see that Violet's really had a charmed life. She had a father mm. who loved her, and she also mm, got to have a, a husband, husband mm. who loved her. Mm-hmm. Like that, mm-hmm. and that's why, and that's why Lady Danbury said that you. What did she call her? What did she say? You're very you're, fortunate. you're very fortunate, right? Yeah. Like because, and I think that that's what she probably was talking about too. Is that yeah, we're talking about your husband, but I, I you know, I know your father treated you like this as well, mm-hmm. and so like you've you've always been very fortunate to have that. She didn't know her parents. She was raised to to be at by the age of three. 
to marry this old man who was gonna hump on her 15 times a day you know what so it's, it's like what me think about mm. he come on me he come on top of me and do his business yes 100 very very sealy very big sealy energy yes um um oh, go ahead. sorry so agatha goes to tea with the dowager princess again and lord danbury is like we need to host the first ball of the season which lady danbury makes a tradition of that mm -hmm. and, i know yes and i know i, I put seeing, that together later yeah, yeah i love seeing the evidence of these traditions even the yes. little pomeranian that yeah. present day she's surrounded with pomeranians because it's this symbol of like his kind he got this for me Ugh. anywho um and <sighs> it's it's this thing of like well if you don't want to press her about the ball then maybe you should just stay here with me and it's like uh -uh, baby, that, that's what we ain't gonna do i'm gonna go i'm gonna do it don't you ain't gotta worry baby you ain't got you ain't got to worry about me <laughs> um <laughs> i have yeah, I have that. We talked about that, about like the dominance over, you know, whatever. And of course, Catelyn is like, I, I keep calling her Catelyn Stark because I just don't like So her. do I. In my notes, <laughs> I literally have. I, I literally Augusta. have. And Catelyn it's not Stark. that she's not a good performer. It's just like Catelyn Stark forever to me. But she also like, and I put it here too, that like she knows how to be a mother. Like she acts her ass off as a mother, right? Okay. Like in everything I've seen her in, I'm just like, yo, she's great. Also, I don't know when we're talking about fashion, but her gowns every time, every single time. We we set when we started, you know, like planning this, you know, loose discussion. I really want us to have a fashion component, but I was so taken by every look all of it no look there wasn't a look that was a sleeper no everything is so and this is I, I'm cautious to say this because it can roll over into respectability politics but mm -hmm. there is something so romantic about dressing up about people dressing up that so do you think that it's respectability politics or do you think that it gives you because I, I feel like and I'm sure you feel the same. I feel like when I put things on or when I dress up or like even when my eyebrows are done or when my hair is done, I feel a certain way about myself, here's, right? Here's why I say that. Yeah. We're like that. We take a certain amount of, I don't even want to say that it, it it's pride because I'm not doing it for other people. It's an internal thing it's for, for me. us. Yeah. Like it feels like it's my armor to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's how mm -hmm. I feel the most myself when I'm dressed up, mm -hmm. right? Yep. The reason mm -hmm. why I I don't want to say, what I was going to say is like, I kind of wish that people felt more compelled to dress, but mm. everyone doesn't do that. Like we talked about the whole thing of like airport fashions. Yeah. People fully go to, when I was growing up, back in my day, you know, <laughs> <laughs> my mom retired from Delta. So yeah. we would use our flight benefits. Up. Mm -hmm. we had to dress business yep. casual to use our flight benefits they Same. didn't yeah. loosen that up until maybe after that bankruptcy or something but now you go to the airport especially if I use my flight benefits you not be on that first flight when the sun coming up and mm -hmm. people are there like in their pajamas right Oof. I can't do that I would never mm -hmm. be comfortable and I do and not from a place of judgment, do you? I don't think you're bringing down the black community by being mm -hmm. out in a bonnet and your mm -hmm. it's your business. Whatever people think about black people is what they think because it's what Period. they Period. Period. However, I also don't understand being comfortable in what you sleep in in your house. Oof. Outside of your Outside. House. I don't even wear pajamas in the house. So- I can't picture wearing them outside. And you know, I'm gonna tell you this. The reason why I can't picture having them outside is the material. The material is gross of pajamas. Well, you know, in my house, I Winnie the Pooh it a lot of times. I Me like, too. I like my homegirl to catch a little air. That's what my grandma right. would call it. My grandma and my mom would catch some air, right? Exactly. She, she needs to breathe is what my mom says. Yeah. And so I, yeah, like I just, I personally just feel like the material of pajamas, unless it's obviously like a, you know, nylon silk polyester whatever like I just feel like the material of standard pajamas is gross so I can't imagine wearing it outside like it's it just also, feels weird for me 
like you've seen me without makeup because like you my good sis right <laughs> for me I think that it's like a sign of intimacy for someone mm. to be with like an out of drag right <laughs> like right. <laughs> You know, like the last guy that I was dating, like I told him, like, I want you to know like how major it is that like I let you see me like out of drag. Like mm -hmm. that is a big, it's a big deal, intimate thing for me. So, you know, and I'm not like Dolly Parton about it because no one's ever seen Dolly Parton out of drag. You know, right. what I mean? like, if I'm going to the dermatologist, obviously I'm not wearing makeup that day or, you know, like right, whatever. Right, 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 right. Right. About it, but I can't. But I said all that to say, all of these looks were striking because striking. we don't see, even in a city like New York, where people do, especially where I work, people fucking dress. Mm -hmm. These looks were so striking because everyone across the board is dressed. I couldn't from top to out. bottom. Because you even see, you even see with Lady Danbury, because again, they couldn't go to the best um, artilliers or dossiers or whatever. Like they couldn't go to the oh, best yeah. ones. And the bodies, right? So you could see her progression of like when she first started in the show to like where they like, you know, like their standards or their their place within the the ton got better because her outfits got even more grandiose and clean and whatever. But she never looked bad to begin with. But it was like, but you could see the richest, the riches, the materials, the colors, etc. Like I love that you could see that too. Yeah. Of course. I, I, I love for costume designers to do their job, to tell us a story with, you know, the fashion. Um, mm -hmm. So the white women are in an uproar about this ball because it's like it's bad enough that they're a part of society. It's bad enough. I don't want to socially commingle with them. So mm -hmm. the, the council of, of thin lipped men are like, parliament is at a standstill because everybody white is mad. So right. you need to figure this shit out. Right. And I love that Lady Danbury was like- First of all, she sent them invitations anyway. I'm not waiting for you. For, she said, ask for forgiveness and ask for permission. So once they get together to have like, you know, this meeting of the ladies in waiting and they throw in shades that I could see Charlotte mm. and young Mozart is playing, you know, um, she is aware that like, oh, okay. So this is yet another chess move. And right. she goes to Charlotte and she's mm -hmm. like, do you not see what's going on, girl? This you over here watching this man. It's a lot going on. To our conversation. This is what it means to be. This is what it means to carry the weight of being the first, of being right. the token, of being Barack Obama. You How many people were waiting for Barack to like free us, right? Like it was like this big thing. And it was like, well, I can't, that ain't really my job for real. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really have that to do, but it was, but I love that she said that to her. Like you out here worried about this, if this man likes you mm. and you, we, you got us out here. Like we are out here because of you. Like our, our next move is your move. I absolutely I loved that. Loved it. She's yeah. like, you are not a simpering girl. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I can't see in my notes where we got to this, but I do have where Charlotte talks to George about, you can be a person with me. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I think just coming out of the situation that I'm coming out of, or like healing from that or, or figuring out my way through that of like explaining to a person that like you, you can be your whole self. Yeah here like you can like this is a safe space I found that so beautiful like beautiful. those kinds of moments of vulnerability where he's just like I'm an exhibit you know mm -hmm. and she's like I initially he's just like girl please do not give me a speech and she's like no what I'm saying is I get it right I, I get it I do want you to be able to just be George here you can be yourself right. here and she also uses this as a moment to help out Lady Danbury. And it's like, we need to do something for my people. So they say, right. you know what, bitch? We go into the bar now. Everybody go into the bar now. Wait. Right. <laughs> well, honestly, um, I don't even think they said that like everybody had to go. It was just like, yo, we're going. It's understood. Here, here's an invitation to let y'all know that this is where we'll be attending. We'll be attending the first ball here at Lady Danbury and Lord Danbury's home. It's understood. Mm. Um, I mm. also look, can we talk about how, how much of a bow bitch Lord Ledger is? Okay. I have that in my notes too. And I was like, 
So <laughs> not only did he come in and say, I like you, let's be friends. Baby, he also said, You mind if I dance with your wife? Hey, um, can I you may I have her hand? Well shit. And then her. Okay. Well shit. Why not? <laughs> okay. And it's the fact Yo. that they, like they set the tone for mm -hmm. everything. So once they start because it when nobody mingling it's like these right. white people was that's what she up. said yeah yeah these white people was like we ain't gonna get on too much we gonna go well well we won't gonna go but now we gonna go but we ain't gonna have fun you know <laughs> <laughs> um the or we going because y'all told us too bad but Don't we get it have fun it. we ain't gonna really right. drink out stuff like that or have fun the that's funny version of um if i ain't got you yeah I can tell you this is pulling at my heartstrings I thought that was good. It it really matched the moment because, and then like the princess was like, I'm trying not to call her Lady Stark, but it was like the princess was very much like he's like, look at him, right? Like he looks happy. Like he's, she hadn't seen him like that in a long time. And we still don't even know what's going on with him yet. He's so it was good. really, we. so I thought it was very interesting how they, they prefaced and highlighted that moment to set us up for like, the shit that's about to come right because i am so fascinated by people's ability to put together shows because when i like <laughs> do a show recap right i write out my notes and then i have to actually organize them in a way that makes sense to recap yeah. versus right. what it made sense from a storytelling perspective right mm -hmm. and the, the choices that i don't know the story editor or whatever makes about let's put this scene here this scene here they did that so brilliantly throughout this mm. show. Even mm -hmm. the way they handled the flashbacks, I love those moments Perfect. of young Charlotte walking down the hall like this, and then older Charlotte in the same way like that. I that you know, I'm a whore for cinematography. Whore. I was gonna say, and they also did such a good job as actors, maybe even studying who the previous. Or, or the current actors are in their roles because the way Charlotte talks, the way Lady Danbury talks and walks, right? Like, I just thought that the two actresses did a very good job at, like, emulating what the current actor actresses do. Um, and I, I appreciate that because, like, you know, sometimes you can't really... It's like okay, I see this as a young per younger person, but I don't see that character the same. But I could I could see both of them in their flashbacks and in their currents. I like that. I also wanted, speaking to like the, the actor's choices, George is doing such a good job of like, you can see the quote unquote madness come into his face. Mm, Did you peep mm -hmm. it? The way that yes. the, like, the looking of like, he sees- Oh my God, he was good. He was oh. good. Even when he would go into his fits and like he would be stuck and like, you know, like when, before he could come back to like reality, like it, I was like, yo, he's acting his ass off. I got some quotes, um, yeah. but in the next episode, but like yeah. he yeah. definitely is like, I, I was, I was smitten with the young man. Babe, the whole time. So yeah. um, the ball is a success. Um, like you said, uh, this is, this is George and Charlotte feeling like a team finally partnership and yeah. he's just like I can do anything with you by my side and it's that high of yeah. and you and I talk a lot about mental health and how you can become codependent on someone because that dopamine hit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's really yeah. easy to be like well shit I got you because I've had someone do that to me I have you so I don't I don't need anything else and it's like I'm a person though I like, can't take all that on. I, I can't take, I can't carry my stuff and carry your stuff too. And to have someone cling to you for that kind of like, like as a lifeline, it's a really sweet thing, but it's not sustainable. But, but he also didn't want to, to be honest. I mean, she offered it, right? Like she, right. she offered herself to him in that way. And he was push. he was fighting for a long time. Right. Um, and so, but I don't think he gave in until the very end. Yeah. He, you know well, what I mean? then we find out later, like what happened, but like they yeah. go to sleep in this really beautiful like place and he has this like dissociative episode and mm. I cannot tell that you. That was wild. 
you have no idea. Like I would, I can't put into words what I was feeling watching her snap into action to protect him. Yeah. And her being like, Reynolds, I got this. This is my man. I got right. this. Right. And, you know, it's like, I'm Venus. Venus is right. going in the house. Like, right. I, bitch. Uh, bitch but i ain't gonna hold you i mean like it it goes back to that like i'll do it the, the black woman attitude of like i'll do it I'll the do matronly it. the the like motherly instincts that we tend to have and i feel like what else was she gonna do she just married this man she didn't know what was going on with him what else was she gonna do right like especially when she's battling with the fact that she actually loves him right but still doesn't know him yet mm -hmm. and so it's like well what do I do right um I loved that she, first of all him scribbling on that wall and like talking to himself an actor a thespian because I was like because because she could hear him you know like doing the thing and she's like what is he doing and then she signs the light and it's like these erratic drawings and I'm just like yo this is crazy because I didn't think Obviously, we saw him with the doctor in the cellar, but I didn't think that it was this. So I did, because again, you know, like I listened to a lot of historical podcasts, media, like whatever. Mm. And to be very clear, a lot of times those stories kind of run together for me, but I mm. heard of the Mad King George. Right. But I didn't think it was him. I don't know why I didn't put that together. Like, I just, I did not put that together. Because I did there's not think so of many of the same name and so many, you know what I mean? And yeah. I was like, oh, because even when later in the series, he's talking about the college the Mad King. and mm -hmm. speaking to parliament and whatever, right? It's like, okay, all of my knowledge mm -hmm. of real world history is like, oh, okay. okay. Especially when he said they could call me the Mad King. I was like, oh, that's who that is. That's right, like I just, is. I wasn't thinking, I wasn't thinking that. Yeah. And the, and the fact that they called dementia madness is just very Everything wild was to me. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's very interesting to think about now today. Madness was the the umbrella term for some right You ain't back. normal, right, I'm right. right back, bro. Your nerves bad. There's something wrong with his nerves. It takes nothing. My grandmother to this day, my nerves. And it's like, hun. Babe, you got anxiety. You got to see somebody about that. And it, the fact that it's just like, you you want to just take a little bit of an edible? Baby, what you want to do? I got, a little, I got a little vodka here. We could, you know, we could do whatever you wanted to do. Figure it out. But I, but I do, again, there's something about Charlotte and even her bathing him with... Reynolds and Brimsley being right there and being like what is going on with him what is like it? what is happening and she's pissed but she's still taking care of him yeah right like I think that that speaks to like the love right where it's like I'm gonna come back to you later we gonna get we gonna take care of this but like what's going on what is this this is also right. the episode where um Lord Barry Lord Lord Danbury he died on top of me oh Honey, when she came out, first of all, I loved her handmaiden. Coral. Um, Coral. Loved her. She's so funny. Um, but I loved how she came out. That's her homegirl, even though she's her like lady in waiting, I guess you would call her. Like she came out immediately, was like, oh my God, no more baths. Like I I'm a free, essentially, right? They hugged. And then she was like, okay, I'm going to go in here. And then Coral's like, okay, you better give me your best performance, bitch, because we're going to have to like sell this, right? So I really thought, again, I'm, I loved the like little pieces of like that sisterhood that, that Shonda was throwing in there. For sure. Um, meanwhile, in the present, quote unquote present, Bridgerton present, um, it's the scene where Violet is mourning her husband's death and, you know, Lady Danbury tells her like how fortunate she is. And I was so happy that she forced her to meet her again so that she yes. could explain to her, this is why you're right. lucky. Um, right. And then also present day, Charlotte presses Brimsley about like, why do you think my, kid, my all of my children are like a failure to launch? And I did not. And he's like, cause you lonely, bitch. See, I did not realize. I didn't get that. When he says, your daughters couldn't leave you, you are frozen in time. You're frozen. 
I didn't realize that she was frozen in time. She is a widow of a sort, which we get in episode five in the penultimate episode. This set that up so well because I I hadn't connected those that together. dots. And Cause even because he's not even around in the first season for real, right? We see him like once or twice. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like we can tell something's not quite right from like, right. Season one. and there's a big big moment in season two that okay. really sets this up so you'll see it like once you okay. actually watch, watch. Where you really see that like oh bro be having like major dissociative episodes like okay um mm-hmm. but i did not realize that mm. oh my god she is stuck because she can't but why would the daughters be i guess that that was the part that i didn't really get because even if sure yes right like because i i feel like sure but to your point she had they had 15 kids and not one of them could could produce an heir and it's like okay sure she's stuck in time but what does that got to do with you because you're still out here right like you still out here y'all don't really like care about your mother for real you know what I mean like you could tell that they don't have a relationship with each other so like it's not like you know you or I being like you know oh my mother's going through this right now. I'm going to like chill with her for a little bit. Or I'm going to go home for a little bit and like be with her. That it, It's not giving that. It's giving much like we show up when you call us and then that's it. I so think, I couldn't imagine them not marrying because of her. I think we get more insight in that last episode. True. But that question is still hanging out there for me. As you well. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, okay. So like, what? I mean, so you, do y'all kick it with tea? Like, I don't see y'all having tea with each other. Like, I don't see y'all key keying all day together for you to just be like, oh, I don't want a husband because I'm with my mom. Very fair. Yeah. I don't know. Very fair. Um, episode four ruined me. 